The developments here in Washington, President Biden's bipartisan deal that he struck on infrastructure, a bipartisan group of senators of hundreds of billions of dollars on roads, bridges, things like that. ABC's political director Rick Klein is still with us. So, Rick, uh, on this issue, you, you've been wearing many hats for us today, and we appreciate it. But in addition to the debate of what's going to be in this large infrastructure bill, uh, they also started with very different ideas about how to pay for it, right? We're spending a lot of money these days. Where did they land on what they call in Washington the pay-fors? Yeah, I got to say, Terry, I'm looking at what the White House is saying on this, and the, the word on Capitol Hill is that some of the ideas are pretty squishy. It doesn't involve any new taxes. It doesn't involve even the gas tax. But there are things in there that I think are a little questionable about saying that it actually uh, does anything to pay for it. Things like uh, tightening unemployment insurance, basically cracking down on fraud in, in unemployment, as well as taxes. Uh, also, things like user fees, super fund fees. Uh, one big pay for that they talk about here is what they call macroeconomic impact, which basically says this is going to juice the economy so much that we don't have to pay for it, that it's going to pay for itself. That's a little, that's a little squishy, as I said. And, and I, I wonder how that's going to be received, particularly among Republicans. There's some people that say it's okay. This is the kind of thing you should use the deficit to, to, to finance anyway, because they are long-term and important investments. But there's other people who say, let's not just keep adding to the, the deficit that's going to be inherited by our children and grandchildren. And there isn't a lot here in terms of uh, painful pay for. It's not a lot of here things going to make any politicians really sweat it, uh, which I think is by design. Yeah, I've been around the town long enough to know when people say, we're going to get billions of dollars from fraud, where we're going to fix the whole problem in waste tax fraud, fraud or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it makes it waste fraud. We're going to pay for it by getting rid of all that waste, fraud, and abuse. They've been saying that for a long, long time. So, uh, But let's talk about the politics of it. This was a bipartisan group of senators negotiating this. Mitt Romney got a shout-out from the president's remarks in the East Room, saying he's never broken his word to me and, and others. The president seems he's confident uh, he, that, uh, that, that he can sign this bill. But really, you know, when you look at that group and the rest of the Senate and the votes that they'll need, how done a deal is this? Yeah, it, not even close. It is quite a balancing act because you look at those, you start with these 10 senators, five Republicans and five Democrats. It's not clear that there are another five Republicans, which you'd need to break the filibuster. And it's not clear that you have all the progressive Democrats, the, the Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren wing of the party, very skeptical about this deal. And in fact, Nancy Pelosi earlier today came out and said, my members are not going to vote for this unless it is paired with a much larger package that's going to be part of the budget process, a party line vote. Uh, and she says, there, there ain't no deal if you let you get both. And, and, and notably to me, Joe Biden signed off on that notion. He said, in fact, he wouldn't sign this, this bipartisan package unless he also gets the bigger package. So yeah, $1 trillion is big enough, but now you're talking about $6 trillion or bust, and that's the Biden play. That is very difficult. It's going to be easy for Republicans to stand against it, easier now that they can say the price tag is actually going to be larger because Democrats are going to try to spend more. And for progressives, they're going to need to now make good on that promise, the explicit promise from the House Speaker, from the President, uh, that you get both big, uh, the big package and this smaller package at the same time. Uh, you know, Biden, I don't think, had any false optimism around this. He said he's going to have to uh, jawbone some folks. But the thing he does go have going for him right now is this is the first time in a really long time, Terry, that you have a legitimately bipartisan piece of legislation that has the backing of the President of the United States and his party, of course, in control of both the House and the Senate. Those are good things. Those are positive signs on the ledger. Uh, but when you get down to nose counting and getting to that, that final vote, there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, it's a throwback for sure, throwback moment, but let, let's see if it fits into contemporary politics or not. Rick Klein, thanks as always for everything. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.